Good Friday, my friends. You made it through another week. Congratulations. This is Michael Myers, your host of Fabulous Forgotten Films. Or Forgotten Films. Whatever. Um, tonight we're going to go a little sci-fi. Our movie is called Mutiny in Outer Space. And it's schlock. And it's probably a movie that I will more than likely make fun of. So... Let's find out a little bit more about it, shall we? Mutiny in Outer Space, tonight's feature. Mutiny in Outer Space is a 1965, stay still, Michael, black and white, independent, American science fiction film written, produced, and directed by Hugo Grimaldi and Arthur C. Pierce, although Pierce was not credited as directing. It stars... William Leslie, Dolores Faith, Pamela Curran, and Richard Garland. The premise or plot or whatever. Space Station X-7 is overrun by a previously unknown but deadly alien fungus that originated in ice caves on the moon and was inadvertently brought back by astronauts returning with lunar samples. In order to save the space station from destruction, members of the crew are forced to mutiny against X-7's commander, who is not in his right mind because of space raptures? Crazy, man. Crazy. So here we go. Michael's probably going to upload this in two parts just because it takes so damn long to upload an hour and a half movie. So, yeah, I'm probably going to split this into two parts for your viewing pleasures and to make it more manageable. So, here we go. Mutiny in outer space. Okay, here we go. Here we go to the show. I know none of these people. Damn, these are some long ass credits. Wow, that really looks not real. The triometric delineator indicates the object's in a phase out orbit. It's on a trajectory and converging on our course. Emergency quarters, emergency quarters. All personnel report to emergency stations immediately. Emergency quarters, emergency quarters. All personnel report to emergency stations. Here's all the personnel, the one guy. No, there's two guys, three guys. I'll go here and twist some knobs, and now I'm going to go here and twist some knobs. Stand by for evasive maneuvers. Generators ready, sir. Another one of those communication satellites, Captain, an 1860 70 type. Closing fast, sir. Range 500, and directly in our orbit pattern. Activate horizontal number three, 25 degrees. Stand by vertical control jets. Standing by. Activate vertical control, four second thrust. Oh, well, this is pretty cheesy looking. Direct horizontal tilt. To an instant contact, you saw Earth base. And tell them another of those 30 year old derelicts has shown up, so step on hazard. And give them my new orbital pattern. 
Yeah. And bring me a cheeseburger. Yeah, we can um, send all the poor people up there. The savings in transporting raw materials will be tremendous. Yes, if we can convert that ice to water. It may not be that simple. Captain Stevens, have we heard from Lunar Base yet? Not yet, sir. We're still trying. We should be able to incorporate solar power reflectors. The heat they can produce will certainly melt ice. Yes, I know. I wasn't thinking of that. It's a human element that concerns me. Mm. Read the script while you're uh, holding that paper there, pal. He couldn't remember his lines, so they gave him the script. Ice caves on the moon. Mm. What's so great about that? I read you. I read you. What did you find in those ice caves? Did you get me any samples? I got a check of everything I can see. Yeah, I got a strawberry snow cone. Good work, Major. And I made you an ice carving of a duck. We'll program you on return flight plan R-350. You'll have layover on the space station. The transport ship isn't scheduled to leave Earth until next week. Aww. I hate layovers, long layovers. I planned it that way. All right. Have a good trip, and don't lose those samples. Over. See you next week, General. Over and out. Don't lose those General, samples. What am I, 12? I'd give 10 years of my life to be out there with those boys. It's your own fault. <sighs> you set the age limit. <laughs> I know, but I'd still like to be out there. Absolutely. Who wouldn't want to be out on the icy cold moon? Eh, we're off. I like the way it turns. Well, we're up and down. Now we're going to go flat. We are now feet. No problems whatsoever. Just sit back and let the electronic skipper sail you safely through the hazardous seas of star studded space. Sure. Sure, nothing to it. Yeah, you push a couple buttons. The first trip out is the only rough one. After that, it's like cruising down a freeway in a wrong lane blindfolded. <laughs> uh, Tell me something, Major. What did you mean when you told General Nolan that you planned it that way? The layover on the space station, I mean. What's so special about it? It's not what, Weber. It's who. Who? Okay, who? You've heard of heavenly bodies, haven't you? Well, kid, in about eight hours, you're going to see a real live living one. You'll probably put in for an immediate transfer for a tour of duty on the space station. But don't. You'll be too late. 
In one more month, she'll be transferred back to Earth and into the arms of her friends, Charming. And happiness ever after. You don't mean Lieutenant Ingstrom, that great big beautiful blonde with a binary brain. That's right. I do not mean Lieutenant Ingstrom. The great big beautiful blonde binary brain. The civilian biochemist? I didn't know she was out here. Is she supposed to really be something? I can take my word for it. It's no supposition. It's a fact. And we're off. You need a bath there, Stinky. Uh, here's the bay. I got you. Yeah, I well, he won't be fit to live with if the Dodgers win this one. I'm not watching a ball game, Lieutenant Ingston. Of course not. You're probably following the progress of Hurricane Nora. I hear she's been a very naughty girl. No wrong again. Station C's on weather duty. He's studying the Central American Canal. Well, Probe 5 is due in at 1330. With Major Towers and Captain Weber. I've already confirmed your approach plan. Cold cargo. Geological specimens from the Lunar 2 area. <laughs> well, we won't have any radiation to worry about. That's a relief. But you better run a routine analysis anyway, Doctor. Yes, I'll go right down to the laboratory and alert Miss Montaigne. She'll want to have the molecular scope ready. Well, and she'll be on cloud 99 when she hears her Flash Gordon's on his way. Ooh, Flash Gordon's coming. I suggest you call it a day. You look a bit weary. I feel fine. You must get more rest. Now look, I'm only the doctor. I'll only remain a few more minutes. But please don't ride me. I've had enough experience in space to know when I've had it. Well, I haven't. So shut your pie hole. Doing you degenerates. It's Friday evening. Have some fun. Do something. 
Um, the movie, so far so bad. Um, 15 minutes and we ain't died yet, so. Okay, well, we'll keep going. He called her a nymph who lives here? Oh. <laughs> well, you can take that one of two ways, I guess. Michael would. Sexy glasses, all right. Why didn't you say so in the first place? Some friend you are. How much time have I got? About six hours. Hey, I'm going to need probably about six days to look good. Oh, she's a lot better without those big old hokey glasses. And they said I couldn't count. I love the way <laughs> the goofy spaceship has to go like it's laying down to land or whatever. It makes like zero sense whatsoever. Okay. The thing on the right looks like my automatic uh, ro robot vacuum mopper. Red Rover, Red Rover, will you come over? Ten four, good buddy. Check your mirrors. And uh, we'll catch you on back on the flip side. Come back now, over. Come on, Bandit. Let me get you, Bandit. Come on, you out there, Bandit. We're five down and on town. Here we go. Eastbound down, load them up and chuck them. We gonna do what they say can't be done. Ooh, fancy. Let me move in slow motion. Holy crap. Could they made that um, space down there any higher? Look at that. His head's like at the very, very bottom, and then you got like a foot of room. What are you going to do? Oh, he's just going to float over. Yeah, no problem about getting lost out in the bowels of, of space or nothing. With no attachments, no nothing. See? Just jump right on in, and here he comes over there, and there you go.
Blow him out the HELOC. You don't know what a guy's got. He could have civil herps or something. Oh, devil cat now. Sorry. Cat issues. Yeah, you can see. Move your big head. Okay, I can see where we're going on this. Not the movie. My retarded cat. She's always making messes and creating problems. Woo, there's a babe on the thing. Yeah, there's a babe on my um, Roomba. Air conditioning. Okay. Next, you're going to overturn the Americans with Disabilities hey, Act. This feels good. Oh, Dr. Hoffman, welcome. Cubby? Well, well, if it isn't the outer limits. Then it's off limits to you, Captain. Oh, you make me sick. I don't like you. You better have one, two towers. I can't afford to have two sick eyes from outside my hands. Guys always act like that when I say that to them. I believe we can do that. Yes, sir. Ooh, you sexy mama, you. Woo, woo. Yeah, hubba hubba. Woo, 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 woo. Yeah, can we get tinier doors in here, please? Yes, crawl through the tiny door. We were on a budget. We couldn't afford big doors or normal doors. You're lucky you're not crawling through a porthole. Well, 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 look what room service left. Oh my gosh, she kisses like a mannequin. What are we playing volleyball? I don't think so, pal. See, look at him. He's like half a ferret. Yeah. He's got a crush on that other dude. Mm -hmm. Dr. Montaigne, please report to the infirmary. Faith Montaigne, please report to Dr. Hoffman in the infirmary. Acknowledge, please. All right, Lieutenant, right away. Dear Connie. She's all right. You just have to get to know her. Uh, later? Uh, later. Yeah, 
much, much, much later. Now get out of here. To my knowledge, Colonel, pressure changes have never brought on symptoms like this. And I, I believe we could rule out space raptures too. Too much weightlessness produces hallucinations, but no, no high temperatures. What about space syphil herbs? Have you checked for space syphil herbs? Synthetic food poisoning, maybe? No, it isn't that. Fates run a test on that. She's checking his blood right now. Nah, he'd be blue if he had food poisoning. with this boy. It's something new to me. <gasps> it's all Greek to me. It's always this way. Just when we think we have space under control, some new barrier looms up. There are things out there we may never understand. Wow. Or live with. Nice speech there, Jim Bob. Why don't you go up, jump up in the rack and take a nap? <laughs> He's not you know out. Michael, funny. I'll do my very best. Yeah, don't you worry about me, pal. It's cool. I'm cool. Oh, I'm not a cameraman, though. Sorry, yo. I know you're getting seasick. Whatever. You be alright. Get a bucket. Remember, this is a movie about space bacteria. No, space algae. No, space civil herbs. I don't know. Ooh, spooky! It's like you got a broken lens. Yeah, since we just looked at it a minute ago, it might have changed. Whoa. It's grown at an amazing rate. Wait, don't touch it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead, touch it. No, put your tongue on it. What does it taste like? If it is, we all may be in a lot of trouble. His pain's increasing. What kind of trouble, Faith? I'm not as well-versed in fungi as you are. She's a specialist in fungus. Space fungus. Now we've got to isolate Weber before the spores have a chance to spread. The compression chamber can be sealed. Yes. Faith, where are you going? To the lab to analyze those moon samples. If that is a fungus, it must have come from the ice caves. Dr. Hoffman, Gordon's been with Captain Weber all the time. Yeah, you gotta be wary of that ice yes, fungus. This is a big problem. Oh, and Faith, I don't think we should say anything to anybody about this until we're more certain. Not even to Colonel Cromwell. You're right. Okay, boss. Uh, that was nice. They wrote Space Station X7 on the outside of it. What you looking at there? Hot stuff? All right, it was a fungus, now it's a virus. So next it'll be a bacterium and then an amoeba. Brain-eating amoebas from space. Yeah, I'm just going to ask him to give you to me. Move. Oh, Michael's got arthritis.
Everyone, jump into this little door. What are you on a submarine now? Twenty thousand leagues above the moon. Mm, it looks like a little white light to me. Can we? Should we flood the, the torpedo tubes, Captain? Arr, where's my parrot? There is a lot of space in space. You got that right, bro. Not collision course. Can we get partial collision course? We're on a collision course with the meteors. Plus or minus 500 miles. Meteors? Collision course with the meteors. Plus or minus 500 miles. Meteors? I thought it was like one blip or whatever. You know. That's what the sonar said from, from our hybrid submarine. We all live in a yellow submarine. A yellow submarine. A yellow submarine. Ready on to elevate us. Let's take a look at that enemy of ours. Mmm. Yep. <gasps> oh, I think it's going to hit it. It's going to hit it. Oh. Woo. That was a close one, wasn't it? Bottom. I'll take care of north and south. Could you and Miss Fontaine come to the infirmary at once, please? Captain Weber. Yes, Doctor, right away. Miss Fontaine. No, oh, Miss Fontaine. We volunteered? You forget, Connie. Only the best can qualify or not. What's going on in the infirmary? Faith turned white just now. I don't know. But I'm going to find out. I will get to the bottom of this. Damn it, Kirk. I'm only a doctor. You can all climb out of your little holes now. There's a fungus among us. That is all. What? All he had was a dissel on his leg. Could have been now we know. Or whatever. All of our lives are in jeopardy. Could have been syphil herbs. Do you realize a thing like this could put us in quarantine? Now where is Weber? I want to see him. I'd rather you didn't. What do you want to give him a kiss? He's dead. Pretty terrible sight. I'd like to see for myself. 
Whatever. You the boss. I knew it. Everyone should have saw it. There's nothing unusual in there. What are you talking about? Yeah, it looks fine. Yeah, I'll miss going to the damn Motley Crue concert. We've got supplies enough on this ship to last for three months, longer if necessary. And Faith can always manufacture more food in the lab. Unless the supplies become contaminated. That's why we must sterilize the station immediately. No. There's a fungus among us. Captain Weber died from pressure shock. And that's what will be reported to General Nolan. Yeah, that looks like pressure shock. Yeah, yours, pal. Must realize what could happen if that fungus gets to Earth and starts spreading. Become a very sick man, Major. Many months out here without relief. You know, the effects of prolonged weightlessness. Even half gravity isn't enough after a while. He's yeah, Michael space. knows prolonged he weightlessness. He gets it at the right dispensary. <laughs> I'm in Florida, it's legal. Peace out. Let's shove him in the HELOC, like I said. Told you. Okay, that's a terrible looking model. Now, is this an awesome movie or what? I told you this was going to be great. And it is. We have a fungus among us. We have a captain going cuckoo. Because he's got space civil herps or whatever. That dude, his like head like rotted away or whatever. Bummer. So, that will be the first part of two part series on mutiny in space. Um, we'll pick up shortly thereafter. I figure this way, you know, break it down to 40 minute videos instead of one 120 minute video. Michael can't do math for shit, can he? So then Jim blows the head at you. Anyway, that will do with the first part. Part one of two of Mutiny in Space. Please hit the like, subscribe, and leave a comment if you wish. And until next time, Michael wishes you. A nice evening.